Time Out New York did not love Lennon, but they adored the moment in the second act that depicted the birth of Sean Lennon. They said, Julia Murney commemorates the occasion with the song Beautiful Boy. It's an enchanting arrangement, beautifully sung, which I savored every second of, as it possessed simple performance magic. Julia actually made her Broadway debut in Lennon in 2005, and here to speak about and sing from Lennon, Julia Murney. <laughs> Eleven twenty. Oh. It's the oddest thing to sit, to stand behind the curtain and have you talk about the show. It's very strange. Poor Lennon. Oh. Every once in a while, someone will come up to me and be like, oh, "I loved Lennon," and I always go, "Oh, you're the one." Uh, we had a good time. I don't know about everybody else, but we had a good time. Oh, look, see, there it is, right there. There's John. Um, hi. What? What? Oh, sure. Oh. So, Jennifer asked me for, for some slides. We're doing a slideshow, you ready? Here we go, I can't remember what I gave her. Oh, okay, so that was, that was the very first photo shoot that we did, that's Marcy and Chad and Mandy and myself, and right after this, the day after this, I had to uh, become a bleach blonde for the show, which was um, traumatic. It took eight hours, and it, I kept it for a while because it took so long to make me blonde, but it never felt right. But I had to be blonde in the show because I played Cynthia Lennon at one point, who was his first wife, and she was blonde, and, but those were the, the few pictures that were caught. Oh, <laughs> that's in San Francisco. Those were our original costumes in San Francisco. We all wore the same, uh, these sort of base outfits, and then we put things on as we all became different people. These were um, really thick material, very awkward to wear, um, and uh, didn't fit. And I think the next picture might, yeah. <laughs> See, there's me being bleach blonde. And when you raised your hands, then you, your belly showed, and no one wanted that. And then when we got to New York, the, the whole concept changed, and we got to wear jeans. And I actually, I told Jennifer, this belt is the belt I wore in linen. I wore it tonight in honor of this. Um, but yeah, we just got to wear comfortable street clothes and not these strange things that make Julie laugh at me. Um, oh, this is opening night when Yoko uh, came up on stage, because she's Yoko, and, um, and, and saying, give peace a chance with us. And I, I do remember in that moment, <laughs> of all things, thinking, Yoko's very tiny. She's a teeny, teeny little woman. She's got quite a rack on her, though. <laughs> Maybe even in that moment, you're all we are saying. Are those hers? <laughs> like, truly, I was just, I was kind of fascinated by the by the, by the boobs on your Um But yeah. Oh, this was our favorite. This is the quote that they dropped. The first big hit of the season has out Mama Mia, Mama Mia. <laughs> is that a compliment? <laughs> and that was pretty much the best we got. So you know. Oh, and that was at our, um, we did a photo shoot. This is back when we thought we were going to be a hit. Uh, <laughs> for uh, Newsweek. We did a, a photo shoot for Newsweek. And, um, and that was fun. Like, we got our makeup done. It was some fancy photographer. We were in San Francisco at the time. And yeah, those are the boys. <laughs> uh, that's Darren, who was uh, the standby for the guys, who was like this genius Beatles savant and knows everything and I used to call him and our director Don Dungeons and Dragons because they knew too much about the Beatles it was it was disturbing I'd be like hey Darren what color socks did Paul wear when they recorded Let It Be he'd be like he wasn't wearing socks he'd be like too much it's too much it's gone too far but he's a genius genius musician okay so this is this is a series of pictures we did. This is called What Happens When You Get You Receive the Closing Closing Notice for Your Show. So, oh, let's see, they're kind of out of order. So, so on the the top, oh, that goes this way. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is like, hmm. Oh, we're talking. Oh, what's this? Oh, I don't know what you handed me over there. Oh, just just hold on one second. I know that's such a funny joke. It's so funny. Wait, I'm just gonna just gonna read this thing. Do you have the rest of them? Do you have the next one? Oh, I'm gonna read this. Wait, what the hell is that? What the hell is this closing notice? What you, you know what? You can take your closing notice and you can suck it. And that because in uh, on Broadway, even like even though the producers come and, and explain to you, you know, the, the, the notice is going up. There is actually a physical notice by by law, by union law, that has to go up. And you're kind of like, really? Do you have to add insult to injury and have it be there like, ooh, ooh, ooh? But you have to, and it's sort of sucky. Um, but is that? Oh. Okay, so.
so we were supposed to do the San Francisco out of town, and then we were supposed to go to Boston, and then come into New York. And then after San Francisco, with the costumes, and they decided to do a bit of an overhaul of the show, so we canceled Boston completely, and came back to New York and rehearsed. And cut to, a year later, I'm touring as Elphaba in the Wicked Skit, and we go to Boston, and we're, um, we're, we're getting our tour of the theater, and they have all these posters from the shows that have been there, and in a staircase, hidden in a corner, <laughs> it's our Lennon poster. So, when I had my shiz out, my shiz shiz on, uh, I took this picture and I sent it to the cast. And, yeah, that's what went on there. Even the poster changed. Even that wasn't even the, the final artwork. Everything changed. It was very interesting, but that was mine. Yeah, see, that was the final artwork with John with the, with the rainbow glasses. And, um, and we used to, as, as they mentioned, we played to rather smallish houses. Um, and we used to, it was pretty casual. We used to do what we called the Lennon look, where one of us would just sort of peek out the curtain, and it would be like this. Oh, no, empty up there. Okay. Oh, there's some people down here. Great. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those weird things. We had such a good time doing the show, and, and there were people like y'all who were digging it, and we could feel them digging it, and it's, it's like this strange lesson that you learn, even like the kind of the biggest piece of shite you ever do, somebody out there is digging it for reasons you don't know. <laughs> and it's not for you to know, it's for them to enjoy. So you have to do it for them. You can't go on stage and be like, I know this sucks, you know this sucks, let's do it. You know, you gotta do it. And, and that's what, it's, it's, it's an odd trick, but it's truly, you know, in, in that, Way, doing a wicked is easy because everyone's like, you put my mom on a cherry picker and paint her green. They'd be like, it's the best show ever! <laughs> Actually, my mom is replacing in Wicked come September. So go, go check out Anne Murney rocking the, rockin the green. Um, but yeah, but so you know, we, had a, we had a great time until the day it ended, and it ended real, real fast. But actually, the night that it ended, um, uh, was, this was right around the time that Hurricane Katrina occurred. And there was a huge benefit done that evening at the Gershwin Theater um, that was 18 hours long, I believe. Even longer than this. And, um, <laughs> and I sang in it. And I got to stand on the stage of the Gershwin and sing this very sweet little song. And not very long after that, I was asked to do the show. And I actually do think that that was almost a part and parcel because they were all there and I knew them and I'd gone and whatever. But um, it all just keeps cycling around and that's, those are the stories of Leonard. There are others but I can't tell them in public with cameras. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested. But, um, yeah. So, anything else for that was perfect. Okay. <laughs> this is the song that I sang uh, in Act Two with, um, with Chad Kimball's head in my lap and uh, Will Chase lying back on his, on his elbows looking at me with his little Will Chase face and, um, and, uh, and the girls all around me. And it was, it was one of those things where I, it was such an open atmosphere of rehearsal. Don Scardino is the loveliest man you'd ever want to know. And, and this was one of those times where I said, because Chuck Cooper had said, I have this vision, he sang Instant Karma. And he was like, I had this, this vision last night in Instant Karma that we all did it in sign language. And sure enough, well, we all shine on. We did it in sign language. That's where you, someone came in and taught it to us, and that's how we did it, because that's how Chuck saw it. And it was his number. And I had just this vision of everyone just sort of being around me, because it's this rather, it's a quiet, maternal moment. And that's what we did. And I loved it, because because my peeps were there, so this is beautiful boy. Before you.
Better and better